nose. The next step we'll go to is the eyes. And the very first thing that we need to make sure we do is along the upper and lower eyelid, if you look at this area, right along here, what we need to make sure we do is pull the oil glands out of this area. This little triangle area right here, the coruncle, uh, will clean this area, remove all of the material above and below that eyelid and remove all the oil glands. And by doing that, when we go to tuck this eye over the clay, we don't have any material, ex excess material, and that'll give us a very, very clean finished eye without any debris. Now that we've got the area around the eye, the oil glands have been pulled out completely. We're gonna continue trimming the eyelid. I like to turn it right side out so that we've got our skin um, inverted through the eye opening and that gives us a good quarter inch that we can see exactly where it needs to be cut. But there's our finished eyelid. Next step is gonna be removing the cartilage to our ears. And we're actually gonna show you two methods today on how to do the ears. The first step, we're gonna use uh, some ear liners available through Research Mannequins. Great ear liners, lots of detail on the inner ear area. Uh, the bad news is that removing the cartilage is gonna be the first step to getting those ear liners put in. And that can be a little bit taxing. Once we get it split in half, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel uh, the bulk of this cartilage off and then we'll test it against our Bill Lancaster ear liners. I'm gonna take just a small amount of ear magic, place it down inside the tip of that ear. And then we're gonna take, make sure that you use the correct ear. And then we're gonna put a nice coating on this. It doesn't take a lot of this adhesive grab, but we do want to make sure that we get enough on that ear. And we'll also want to have a paper towel kind of on standby. And we'll invert that or insert that ear liner into the ear. Now this is where you want to be a little bit careful not to blow the tip of that ear out. We'll just slide that ear liner in. We'll go ahead and keep working that ear until it cures all the way, which we've got just a few more minutes and it'll be done. Now for the sake of demonstrating to you um, an alternative to uh, using an ear liner, I'm going to show you how to do a bonded ear method. Um, for a lot of commercial shops, Using a bonded ear method is one of the preferred uh, methods. It's fast. Uh, you get a custom fit ear liner every time, but there are certain things that you need to do uh, the right way. Uh, we're going to start out with a little bit of Bondo, and I like to use the fiberglass chop that Research Mannequin sells is about the perfect consistency for using in the bonded ear method. We'll mix in a little bit of fiberglass chop. And you want this mix to be fairly stout, but not super thick. It's gonna have to go inside that ear and be able to move it around a little bit. This fiberglass chop, when mixed with Bondo, will give you the strength for that ear liner. Once that ear is good and dry, we'll take and rough that up with a wire brush. We'll take and put a little bit in the tip of that. And our goal here is to work that Bondo all the way down to that tip without getting a bunch of air trapped in there. We'll just take and make sure that our Bondo is all the way to the very tip of that here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to flip this ear over the edge of the table and we're going to shove Bondo in here. We're going to work it up this top portion of the ear down to meet our Bondo that's in the tip and then up the other side. By doing that, we're going to try to make sure that we don't get any air trapped in there. And ultimately, the last thing that you want to do is come along the edge of that ear and literally take and pinch that Bondo down to a real fine edge. The last thing we'll do is once that ear is completely set up, we'll invert it, 
take your paper towel off. And then we're just gonna take and clean off the excess amount of Mondo and fiberglass chop. Okay, we've got our cape is prepped and ready to go. One of the most important things that you'll need to do is test fit it to your mannequin. Uh, we've got a pedestal antelope from world champion Mike Frazier that we're gonna be using today, but we still wanna make sure that this thing fits. I'll have Mark come in here and give me a hand with test fitting this. Some things that you should try to do uh, with an antelope is ensure a proper fit. When we slide this up on that face, the one thing that you will not be able to get away with on an antelope is trying to force it onto a form that's too big for the skin. Now one other thing, when we first put this on here, um, you may immediately go right to the neck and try to squeeze that tight. The first thing you should do is make sure that your brisket gets lined up, your armpits get lined up, and then what I do is I'll come right up and I'll tack that in place. Bring it up, test fit, make sure that my eye sockets are lined up. We fit there, we fit across the face. And all I'm doing is bringing the back of that skin right around and we're, everything is coming together really nice on the back of this. Okay, now once we've got our mannequin leveled, entire head is level, uh, normally if we were using a uh, standard shoulder mount, we would level it with, uh, as if it were on a wall, straight up and down on the back and then level the head from side to side. Additionally, to help me keep on track a little bit, I've run a line up the center of the head and what we'll do is we'll test fit that skull plate up against there. Now we want these eye orbits to be a continuation of the mannequin, but we don't want them too far away from, uh, up and away from the eye orbits. And we'll set that up here, and that's just, once we combine that with a little bit of Bondo, that'll give us a nice firm top, and then we'll adjust this down. And we'll set this skull in place with the Bondo, and then we'll come back in and rebuild the eye orbits with Bondo and fiberglass chop. Everything looks good in the front. Everything looks good in the back. We'll take a little bit of our excess Bondo and do just a little bit of fill around that eye orbit and then we'll come back in. This is starting to kick already. So we'll come back in and do a fill after we trim that back section off. And then we'll finish around that eye orbit and build up around that skull. These eyes are going to set approximately 20 degrees off center and with an 11 degree cant downwards. Um, their eyes are very protrusive and the one thing that I look for in a good antelope mount is that they're not sucked in too much. As we set these eyes, we're gonna level them up. We're gonna make sure that they are on the outer fringe of this eye orbit to capture that look. These animals can almost see behind them. Okay, the eye we're using today is a first honest eye. It's a 34 millimeter base with a 30 millimeter iris. For an antelope, I prefer to use something that's really dark, and we'll start by setting a little bit of critter clay on the back of it. Now bear in mind, we have preset eye sockets in here using what Mike has set in the mannequin. We're gonna put a little bit of clay back here to help seat it. We want that eye to be nice and full in that eye orbit. And the big thing is, is that you want to, at this point in time, know that those eyes are absolutely perfectly symmetrical. And with this graph, you'll be able to do that. Okay, once we get our depth of our eye adjusted, we want to come in and start sculpting our eye. I'm going to take a small amount of critter clay. I'm going to taper the end of it and that's gonna be the beginning of my bottom eyelid. And I'm gonna take and roll that down and roll it up, just catching the slightest bit of that scleral band on the back. And any excess that I've got on here, I'll go ahead and pull off with my finger. Now for the upper, we're gonna run this guy with a little bit more excited look on his face. So his eyes are gonna be open a little bit more Start with the critter clay on the top, work our way up. There's our high point, and we'll bring him down. But just make sure that your depth of that eye looks about like what that looks like. 